everyone, Shauna Carpellis here with California Bar Style. I wanted to talk to you about predictions because I noticed over the years um, being a bar exam tutor that a lot of courses and tutors put out predictions um, either a couple months before the next exam or a week or two before the exam. I have personally, um, by running CA Bar Style, always been a little bit hesitant about publishing my predictions because I'm a firm believer that applicants have to know everything. I'll give you a good example. A few bars ago, I don't think really any bar course was anticipating that contracts was going to come up again. I believe this was uh, February 2016 and contracts came up twice. Um, and we're seeing an influx of certain subjects definitely being tested repetitively. Now, historically, I have been pretty on point with my predictions, never at 100%. And of course, I always tell my applicants to know everything um, because, you know, just because they test Fourth Amendment search and seizure one bar doesn't mean the next bar because it is such a niched area that it won't come up again Although the probability of such a niched area coming up again definitely decreases by the next exam. So what are you to do with predictions? And do you rely on them um, for the, obviously I'm talking about the essay portion of the exam. I would say that if you are with a reputable bar prep company and somebody that has a good track record of predictions. How do you know that? You know that through friends that have taken the course. Um, you know that from reading people's Yelp reviews or courses Yelp reviews and speaking with the tutor. I mean, tutors should be honest and have integrity in running their programs. Not all tutors are honest, unfortunately. And I'm not here to rag on any other companies. However, nothing frustrates me more than um, bar exam companies that just take applicants' money and don't do a good job and do a disservice. So with that being said, I would make sure that you're getting the opinion from a reputable bar company. However, I would not let those predictions guide the remainder of your studying and I would not only focus on those areas because we really don't know what is going to come up. So how do I deal with predictions? Well, a lot of what I do and what I teach is based on patterns and I teach the essay portion and why I think I've been so successful teaching the essay section of the exam is because my patterns are very accurate and I'm able to dissect within a given subject what comes up within the subject categorically. So we're not just looking at the subject in terms of constitutional law, which is this amazing, well, I don't know how amazing it is, but it's this humongous subject that typically requires two semesters in law school. And most applicants um, sit in the class kind of scratching their heads going, what are they talking about? Um, you know, how do we do deal with these scrutiny levels? How does procedural due process come up? So it's very important and pertinent to look at a subject um, in a categorical sense and not just in terms of this big picture um, entity. So we have to break it down and then we can look and see in terms of patterns, not only what tends to come up on the essay portion, which has a great deal of repetition, uh, specifically in California, which is all that we do is California, um, but also look at the niche areas and what is a little bit more hot uh, I call it hot, I call it, uh, you know, sizzling, something that is really due to come up that is a little rusty. Um, examples could be anything from product liability to homicide to negligence uh, to a formation type contracts question. Everyone loves those, right? Um, to the dormant commerce clause, which hasn't come up in over a decade. So uh, again, just to reiterate my point, you can rely on predictions this last July excuse me, February uh, bar that just passed a few weeks ago, we, I actually predicted 100% of what came up. I even shocked myself. Um, and three of the essays that were tested were almost replicas of what I gave my applicants on the simulated exam day. So I definitely am one of those reputable tutors that you would want to rely a little bit more on their predictions, but of course not 
only study those areas because you're gambling with, you know, some miracle that they're only going to come up. And then you definitely don't want to get a low score on something you're not prepared for. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and again, be categorical in your approach. If you don't take CA bar style and you go with another company or you do independent study, um, make sure that you're not approaching the subject in terms of one big subject, but you're breaking it down into various entities so that you know exactly how those certain categories are tested. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I wish you the best of luck if I don't uh, come across you. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye.